Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> yes, I... Um, well, I, I'd actually like to pick up on something that Sean was talking <coughs> about just previously um, about complaints. I just wonder how you deal with complaints about... Um, poor driving that may have endangered people mm. either crossing the road mm. or mm. cycling alongside. Do you feel that that process is working well? Do you have good processes for dealing with those kind of complaints? And, and do those kind of complaints ever come to you? Yeah, absolutely. And I think social media is the most, you know, is, is the most used um, vehicle, excuse me terminology for that um, we certainly mm. see um, a lot you know if, if, if we do receive any complaints of that nature they come in often through social media with a video so we would be able to identify the driver again we would speak to them about their their, their poor driving if that were the case so Thank, and do either of most you of our cars or our company cars have a front facing camera so they're checked um, if there's any complaint like this so we can check their driving and um, and do you, and do you think that w that works? I mean, do you think it? Um, do you think drivers, because they know that they've that that camera is there, that that um, can I help them to I think concentrate? Un I think maybe unconsciously it does. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Steve. There's, there's, there's other things that um, take place nowadays that didn't take place when I was in the industry 20 years ago. For example, the telematics. Most companies track their vehicles now. So they know the speed of the vehicle, they know where, which route it took, and a million and one other things. So you've actually got a complete and utter audit trail with, with a private hire operator mm -hmm. that if a complaint does come in, they can literally go and they can check the speed and every, everything, and they will generally um, always interview the driver. I mean, we had a policy in my company, which, which I sold in 1999, so pre-licensing, that we actually did a road test with every driver before we took them on. We mm -hmm. actually, and we also had mystery shoppers that, that travelled around to, mm -hmm. to check out the driver's behaviour. Now, that's actually moved on now because you can do it remotely. You can check literally everything. Most, I, I would say 90% of the operators in London have uh, tracking that can give you the mile per hour, the speed. So it's, it's really easy to <coughs> do. Um, it's much easier in private hire than it is in a taxi that's just randomly working by itself. Yep. The telematics has fantastically improved things. Thank you. That's 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 very useful. And then, um, sort of leading on from that, uh, and obviously none of you are representing any of the app-based um, operations. Um, and uh, but the do you um, do you, do for for all of you as operators, do you have um, uh, working conditions around? pay and um, and hours that people are working so that people are not driving tired to be able to earn enough money to pay their rent and keep going do you have I mean are people working for you are they employed by you do they have a or or are they working by the job and do you have a sense of how many hours someone is having to work in a week in order to take home a decent wage wants to go first. I go back to when I, my company, um, having worked for London Underground as an apprentice for five years, I clocked in. So I clocked in and out every single driver. Now again, the technology enables us uh, and the, the modern company to actually have a complete and utter record of not only drivers' earnings, but the, um, the, the, the amount of hours that they've done. And um, we work, with, work within safe, safe bounds of our hours driving. Um, very much on hours driving, which was recently discussed with the Department for Transport, because there is a lot of rest periods for private hire drivers, because they'll stop and they'll park, and they won't be driving, so the tiredness factor isn't the same as somebody that's constantly driving. All of that's very closely monitored, and again, technology enables you to do that. With regard to pay, driver has a choice. I chose to be a self-employed driver, which meant I could go on holiday for Sweden, I could come in at what time... Uh, of the morning I wanted to. I had three months in Italy and I did various things. I could come and go as I please. That's mm -hmm. an option that's available to drivers. Other drivers may choose to have the fixed hours option and work for a company and have employment. But predominantly, most people, due to their social needs, they may have to, children to pick up from school and various other difficult things or, or, or social requirements of relatives and what have you, choose to have the flexibility. And if you choose the flexibility, you don't, you know, you don't get with that as I did the same rights as being employed. But there is a clear choice available and there are adverts in our magazine for both, both types of people. This sweatshop 
thing that's banded around all the time isn't my experience. We've got people advertising our magazine guaranteeing a thousand pound a week in earnings. So it's a bit of a misnomer. I think what has happened is the app only companies, as I refer to them, have have actually come in and they've act they charge heavy commissions. They put the prices down to the ground, mm -hmm. and therefore, if you choose to work for that sort of company, you're going to struggle to earn a living. Mm -hmm. So it's a trade-off as to what you want. If you're prepared to commit yourself to regular hours, you can earn a very decent living. Otherwise, people wouldn't be in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so you find that people who are, are, are work have opted for the flexible option if they're working for a, a, a an operator that has <coughs> people at the end of a phone to take bookings and a, a sort of more conve a non -app or not totally app based operation. Um, you, you, in your experience, those workers um, are able to kind of take home enough money without having to work very excessive hours. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's Thank a fact. You. Who, who wants to, Robert, do you want to? Yeah, uh, one doesn't want a tired driver mm -hmm. work, uh, working for you. So we kind of look out for, for a driver who's maybe done a few hours and what, what, watch them and ask them maybe to go home if, if, if they've done more than enough hours because you don't want to drive a driver working excessive hours. And um, again, I think that on the, on the payment front, one tries to, uh, you want happy drivers, so you want them to be earning. So you, you're not, a, so if a driver isn't happy and isn't earning, they have the choice to go somewhere where they can earn more. If you see what I mean, yes. Although it's, it's a free, I guess it's a it's a free market, but as a company, one wishes all all your drivers to be happy. And and so, do you actually have limits on how many hours drivers can work in order that people are not driving tired? Or yes, you do. Yep. Thank you, um, Andrew. Yeah. So we we we're predominantly self-employed model that we use with, with drivers. We do have some that prevents. Um, people enjoying the flexibility that they do under, say, the, the self-employment model. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, th I just wanted to, to add, I think, as much as... Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Um, as much as possible, I think any company wishes their drivers to be happy. So, as a company, one tries their very best to make all, all your drivers as happy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so, if, for example, yes, they are absent or ill or, or whatever, a, d a deal is usually done with the driver as regards vehicles and, and overall the, the, the emphasis is very much on making drivers happy and that is by earning and having a fair work to life balance. I just have one point that um, I think it, it, latest figures show that one third of uh, vehicles being used in private hire are now hired. Now, you can hire a vehicle without the commitment of putting the vehicle around your neck on a weekly basis now. It's widespread. So you're not locked into the vehicle. If, if you do happen to have an illness, you can get the vehicle collected and you're out of the cost of the vehicle. I think it's, it's fake news by s certain people that everybody's on the poverty line and they've all got these vehicles on three-year contracts. It's not the case. Um, in, in many cases where the vehicle is, is owned over a three-year period, obviously the payments are over a three-year period if it's owned by the driver. But generally where they're leased by the company, certainly when I was in operating, if a driver fell ill, they stopped paying the rental on the lease. And that's quite commonplace throughout the sector. You're not going to bankrupt a driver who's an asset because he's got an illness. And I think there's a lot of misinformation about this and about the actual way that the cars are engaged. It's changed because of the entrant of the app only companies. There are now more and more options for the way you take your vehicle. Now, if you're foolish enough when you've not tried the job to take a three year contract, I think that would be madness because you can do it weekly, you can do it monthly. Thank you very much.